How do you install ICM Control's three-phase surge protector? How do you figure out which surge protector is right for you and what types of ICM Control three-phase surge protectors are there? Today I'm going to show you how to install this, how to figure out with a simple test using a meter which one you need and that's right for you and what types of three-phase surge protectors that ICM Controls has to offer. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is go over the four different three-phase surge protectors that ICM Controls offers. We've got the ICM 530, 31, 32, and 33. The 530 and the 533 are both for 120 volt, 240 volt applications. The only difference is the 533 is for delta high leg. And I'm going to explain the difference between delta high leg and then the 530, which is for the delta or Y configuration but we're going to go through and name the rest of them in their application before we do that. So the 530 is for 120 volt, 240 volt application and it's for delta or Y configuration. The 531 is for 480 volt. The 532 is for 600 volt and then back to that ICM 533 that's 120 and 240. So if you take these, the 530 and the 533 these are both for 120 volt 240 volt application this one is delta high leg and this one is for delta or y configuration now how do you know which one to use to be able to figure out exactly which icm control product you're going to need to protect your three-phase air conditioning system or your three-phase equipment that you're wanting to protect maybe a motor you're going to need a meter to do a simple test and what you're going to do is you're going to turn your meter to volts ac okay now for volts ac for this meter i'm going to turn it right here where it says volts okay and what we're going to do is you're going to measure from ground to each phase now we've got three phases because this is a three phase air conditioning system now take a look at this contactor here this is a three pole contactor and we've got three legs of power one two, three, and this is our ground wire. With your meter on volts AC, you take your test leads and you place one test lead on the ground and then the other test lead on the first phase. Measuring the voltage, we've got 120 to that phase. Then you go to the next phase, we've got 121. And then we go to the next phase and we've got 211. And what this means is we have a delta high leg. Since we know we've got a 240 volt system, we're gonna be using either the ICM 530 or the ICM 533. And since we've performed the phase to ground testing with our meter, we know we have a high leg. So we're gonna be using the ICM 533. Now, if we measured from ground to each phase and we didn't have that higher leg on that one phase, if every one of those was equal, then we would use the ICM 530, which can be used for delta or Y configuration. The 530, 531, 532, and 533 are voltage specific. So you have to know exactly what voltage you're dealing with. We have a 240 volt system. So we will not be using the 531, which is used for 480 volt, or the 532, which is used for 600 volt. We now know that we will be using the 533, the delta high leg, because we have a high leg. Now, instead of going from ground to each phase, I want you to see that this is a 240 volt system. So we're going from two to three, we're going from one to two, which is 240, and then one to three. So we have a 240 volt system. Now I'm gonna show you how to install it. First step of the installation, Turn the disconnect off. Now that you've turned the power off, the breaker or the disconnect, confirm that the power is off to each leg by going from one phase to the other. And I'll push the contactor in. So there's no power. Tools that you may need. I'm using a drill and a 5 16 bit. I'm using a flathead screwdriver, a pair of wire strippers, and a pair of adjustable pliers. Now let's see what's contained inside the ICM 533 box. Ooh, 
Looks like we've got an installation manual with some instructions. That's really nice. We've got the surge protector. Oh, quite large. Look at that. Looks like it's got a nipple here and looks like it is a three quarter nipple. I'm going to be installing this at the actual unit and I'll show you how I do that. So we've got installation instructions. We've got our lock nut. That's nice. And we've got our three phase surge protector. So we need a three quarter knockout to go through this plate right here, right? But we don't have one, but we do have an existing hole right here. Looks like it's about three eighths. You can use a green lean knockout kit. You can use a hydraulic punch driver, which I'll drop a couple links in the description and I'll drop a couple videos so you can learn how to use a knockout kit. Today, I'm just gonna use this uni bit. And this is very easy. You just slip this into the drill, tighten it up, and then... Now that we've got our knockout, now we can insert our three phase surge protector and run that nipple, that three quarter nipple inside of our knockout. And it's just not big enough. So we're gonna do it. Now that we've got our knockout, we're gonna insert the three phase surge protector. The wires are gonna go through the bottom, and up through that knockout hole. And see that right there? See our nipple? Now we're gonna take, and we are gonna use, there's a bushing in here. And we need to put that on this see that now we'll put the wires back through here and then put the bushing on and then the lock nut put the nipple up through see that right there how this device is being installed. Tighten that lock nut up. You can use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer. You can use a pair of adjustable pliers. Hold the device. Whatever makes the job easier for you. Once it's nice and tight, then you've got your wires. Now we're gonna look at the diagram, but it's pretty evident how this wires up. Here's the wiring diagram. Take a moment, pause the video. You can see how it's installed here at the fuse disconnect or installed here at the circuit breaker. I'm gonna explain this in very simple terms. So we got four wires. The white wire is going to be installed right here where the ground wire is. The two black wires are going to be installed on the two phases that are not the high leg, which were here and here. The red wire is going to be installed where that high leg was. And if you remember, if you don't go back, check out the video where we did that test measuring from phase to ground, this phase right here on the very left was the high leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the wiring. All right, so we got two options. One, we can use a female spade and we can use our crimping tool to crimp some spades on here and we can connect them right here behind these wires. Or if you got enough room, take your wires connected to your contactor or your disconnect, loosen them up, pull them out, and then you can take and try to shove these wires next to them and tighten them down with the terminal. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to tighten them down and it's going to be secure, but I'm going to try that first. If that works, great. But if it doesn't, then I'll just crimp some connectors on here. I did not have enough room to install these wires underneath those uh, terminals for that contactor. These wires ended up slipping out and I don't want to have an unsecure connection. So I'm going to use a crimping tool and this female spade and I'm going to crimp these connectors. Make sure they're tight. We don't want to have wires slip, slipping out because that could be bad. Okay, so I've got my female spades. Now I'm ready. I'm gonna put my wires in place now. Take a look. This wire goes here. Whoop. Uh, this wire goes here. Whoop. And this wire goes here. And then we're gonna attach our white wire to the ground. Now the two black wires are not polarity sensitive and on your ICM 530, those black wires are not polarity sensitive. You're not gonna have the red wire like the ICM 533 because it's used when you have a delta high leg. Now I've got these in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put these two wires back in place. I'll show you when I'm done and we'll start it up. Now the ICM 533 has been installed correctly. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn our disconnect back on. And once you have the device powered, you should have a green light. If your green light is on, that means you have protection from a high voltage spike transient surge. When you reinstall your power wires, make sure that you don't reverse the phases. That means make sure that you put the wires back where they go or where they were because if you don't put them where they were, then the phase could be reversed and your motor could run backwards. Let me explain. If you've ever heard a motor run backwards, it's an odd sound. If you need to learn what happens when you have the phase reversed and what you need to do, which is basically just swapping the wires back, I've got a video. I'll drop it down in the link in the description so that you can learn more. This is the ICM 530. Unlike the 533, this can be used for delta or Y configuration. This is for 120 volt or 240 volt application. And I wanted you to see the wiring here. We don't have that red wire. We have three black wires and a white wire. The white goes to the ground and these three black wires are not polarity sensitive. So it doesn't matter if you put this on leg number two or three or this one on leg number one, but you need to make sure that you know that you have one, two and three or three, two, one. You've got three legs of power. So you got three black wires for each leg. And this one, is the 530. All ICM controls three-phase surge protectors from the ICM 530 to 533 can be installed indoors or outdoors. They are voltage specific, so remember to know exactly what source of power you're dealing with, whether it's 120 or whether it's 600 volts. If you plan on installing this at your breaker box on the line side, make sure that you are a licensed electrician and make sure that you install it correctly and you're safe or you actually hire a licensed electrician so that you have it installed correctly and you're safe. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you learned something. If you need more information about ICM Controls products, the ICM 530, 31, 32, or 33, I put a link in the description for all these products so you can go check them out and you can find out more information and learn more. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.